Hi there. Uh, in this particular video, we'll be understanding about few of the option Greeks that you know uh, option traders need to understand before they start trading options. So make sure you watch it till the end and have a very good understanding about the two of the option Greeks that I'll be discussing in this particular video. All right. So in the previous videos, we discussed about intrinsic value, extrinsic value, how the option value works, or what all are the different kinds of strategies, or how the option wicks works around. But now we, it's time that we understand some of the option Greeks. That basically helps in determining the true option value. All right. So, say for example, if you see the call option value to be at 120 rupees, 150 rupees, or the put option value to be at 100 rupees, 80 rupees for different strike prices, you need to understand where that value is coming from. All right. And at that point in time, we need to understand few of the option Greeks, and it becomes really important for us to do that. All right. So, so to understand these option Greeks, you know, there are four mainly four option Greeks that you know people generally use. One is theta, the other one is delta, the third one is gamma, fourth one is rho. All right. So, people use this. Uh, but what we'll be discussing is the first two uh, Greeks that we'll be discussing are the theta and the delta. All right. These are some of the important Greeks that we need to understand first, and then slowly and gradually we can develop upon Vegas and rows of the world. All right. So uh, and let's understand theta first. To understand theta, what I'll do is I'll have a very simple example in front of you. Say, for example, we're standing on 30th June. All right. 30 30th June. And on this particular date, the value of uh, Nifty is, say, for example, uh, 19050. All right. That is the current value of Nifty. At this point in time, say, for example, you're bullish on the Nifty index. You think that, you know, in a couple of weeks time, the Nifty index will go up by more than, you know, 200 points, 300 points and so on and so forth. So in order to make money in options, what you need to do is you need to go long call. All right. So in order to go long call, you already know that you need to pay a certain premium for that. So now let's say for a strike price of uh, 19100. All right. We uh, take this position of long call. And to take that position, we have to pay a certain premium. Now, let's assume that the premium is 150 rupees. All right. Now, let's assume that the premium is 150 rupees. Now, those who have watched my previous video about interesting and interesting value, they would realize that uh, this 150 of call option value has only time value. It does not really have any intrinsic value. All right. Because we are right now out of the money. All right. So, that is this. And this particular option that I'm talking about is, say, for example, uh, for 13th July which happens to be a Thursday, all right? And we know that Nifty options generally expire on uh, Thursday. So that is the idea here. And this is what the date is, which is a Thursday. Now, as you all know, Nifty uh, options trade in lots. So one lot has 50 options. So there are 50 options in one lot. And say, for example, we make a position of 50 lots, all right? So 50 lots into 50 options in every lot. And how much are we paying for that? We are paying 150 rupees for this. So in totality, we are making a position of 3,75,000. All right, 3,75,000. This we are making on the notion that in two weeks time from 30th June to 13th July, I am expecting the Nifty index to cross 19,100 by, by a very good margin, by at least, you know, 150 or 200 basis point vis-a-vis -vis 19,100. Now, uh, 30th June, uh, say for example, was a Friday. All right. On Friday, there was some little movement in the index, you know, the index moved from 19050 to 19060 and it came down to 19040. All right, there was certain movement in the index. But at the end of the day, the closing happened at a very close value to 19050. Say, for example, the closing happened at 19045. All right, very near to what our initial spot price was when we entered the option. Now, uh, say, for example, you know, the entire Friday passed by, you know, there was Saturday and Sunday where... The trading could not happen, obviously. And then came Monday. All right. On Monday, again, we had, we started with a, say, for example, a strike, a uh, uh, spot price of 19.05. In that case, what was witnessed was the call option value had gone down from 150 to 120. All right. Despite any major movement happening in the Nifty index, you know, on Friday, it was 19.050. And on Monday, it was 19.045. Despite any major movement in the index, yet, the call option value went down from 150 to 120 rupees. And that is something that we need to understand. All right. So since we had a long position here, all right, we automatically made a loss here because, you know, whenever you go long and the value of that particular uh, contract goes down, you lose money. Now, how much did you lose? For that, we can look at our Excel screen. Uh, so Nifty price is around uh, 19045, you know, as discussed. The call option value went down to 120 rupees. All right, there's a loss of 30 rupees. Now, this loss of 
30 rupees uh, is there and 120 is the new value. So what is the uh, entire contract value? We again have 50 lots. Uh, again, in those 50 lots, there are 50 options and that we need to multiply by 120. So 50 into 50 into 120, that is the new contract value or the overall value of our position. So originally we started with 3.75 lakhs. Now we came down to 3 lakhs. We made a loss of how much? We made a loss of 75,000 rupees by simply holding the option contract for two days and there was no movement in the uh, spot price of the Nifty index. Now why did this happen? The answer lies in the initial part of the discussion where I stated that in this 150 rupees, we have what? We have only the uh, time value and not any intrinsic value. So there was zero intrinsic value in this and the entire thing was time value. All right. So time value is always back calculated. You know, whatever the call option value is, you subtract the intrinsic value and you get the time value. So time value is always back calculated. So that is how it works around. All right. Time value is always back calculated. Now what happened the next day was there was no moment. The intrinsic value still did not come in because for intrinsic value to come in, the option has to be in the money. All, all right. So that value did not come in on Monday as well. So intrinsic value still remains zero. We are on uh, 3rd July already and the intrinsic value is still zero. And the time value went down from 150 to 120. All right. The time value went down from 150 to 120 and that decay in the time value or the reduction in the time value is nothing but your loss as an option buyer. All right. Whenever there is no moment in the index. So what is going to happen as we approach 13th of July? All right. The value went from 150 to 120 in two days time, which was a weekend. And as we move forward and as we move towards the expiry date, which is in our case, 13th July, in that case, the value from 150 will come down to 120, 290, 280, 250, and then to zero. All right. So this will happen gradually as in when the day passes by and then the, and there is no moment in the index. All right. I'm keeping the moment in the index constant and I'm expecting that no intrinsic value is getting generated and you know, as time passes by, the option expires out of the money. So that is how it looks around. And this is the reason why option selling has become a very uh, famous strategy. You know, people sell options because this is what they try to earn. This time value or this time decay is something that they always try to earn and as option sellers. And they anticipate that no major moments will happen in the index. All right. So if I were to draw the graph of time decay, it is nothing but a you know, falling graph with with a simple, uh, you know, uh, tendency of the graph approaching to zero as the expiry comes by. So here we have the expiry and here we have the time value. So time value goes down to zero as the expiry approaches. So as option buyers, uh, time decay is not in your favor at any time. And as option sellers, this time decay works wonderfully in your favor. All right. So this is something that we need to understand that whatever option value you see, always try to break it down into intrinsic value and time value see how much time value the option holds and uh, always look around that as and when the time is passing by how much the decay is happening all right the decay happens overnight the decay happens over weekends you know majority of the uh, decay happens at those points so this is something that you need to understand very well and if you want to become an option buyer you need to you know predict this thing uh, very carefully and you need to play your bets only on things when you expect good moments and as option sellers you need to be assured that the volatility would not come in at the, you know at that uh, at that a rapid pace and things would remain around what the current uh, spot price of nifty is so this is exactly how uh, time value works around the it comes down as in when the market uh, remains you know sideways do not really make any movement and the option sellers make money. Now, the second option Greek that we need to understand is Delta. All right. So Delta is again, very important option Greek and understanding of it will help you figure out, you know, how the value of options actually move around vis-a-vis -vis the stock price movement. All right. So let's go to the Excel sheet and see how it is working around. So again, the underlying here is the Nifty index. All right. And the current price of Nifty this time I've taken around to be 19,000 for 30th June Friday. Again, uh, a number, hypothetical number, not exactly th this was the value, but it was around this. And uh, again, the expiry that I have considered here is 13th July. And for different strike prices, you know, I have uh, put across a different call option value. So say, for example, we had a strike price of 17,500. For that, the call option value is somewhere around 1,700. Now you need to understand this 1,700 comprises of two things, 1,500 of intrinsic value and 200 of time value. All right. So intrinsic value is always back calculated. As I mentioned, it is 17,500 
and 19,000. The difference. So 1,500 is the intrinsic value and the 200 is the time value. And likewise for other options as well, you know, when we have a strike price of 18,000, the uh, call option value is around 1,300. Again, 1,000 is my intrinsic value and 300 is my time value. At 19,000 itself, you know, we call that particular option add the money. In that case, all 800 is my time value and nothing is my intrinsic value. And at 19,500, we have, uh, you know, no intrinsic value and only time value and goes without saying at 20,000 as well, we only have uh, time value and no intrinsic value. So this is how exactly it works around. All right. Now, uh, to understand delta, you need to understand that when we are at the money, that is basically when my spot price, that is Nifty's price is 19,000 right now, is equal to my strike price. I take a call option with a strike price of 19,000. So when we have both of these equal, all right, that is when we say that we are at the money, all right. And as we move, you know, towards the profit range, as uh, as I could, you know, put across. So the value of, say, for example, the strike price is, say, for example, 18,000. In that case. How much are we in the money? We are already in the money by 1000. You know, that is my intrinsic value and 300 is my intrinsic value. So in that case, I am said to be in the money. And as you move farther away from the, you know, current price, you know, towards a lesser zone. In that case, you're, you're, you start to be deep in the money. All right. So that is something that you need to understand that if your stri uh, strike price and your spot price is, you know, equal, you're at the money. If you move away from the spot price, in terms of the strike price, you know, towards 18,000, 17,500, you are said to be in the money, deep in the money and so and so forth. And if you start coming down, you are said to be out of the money and deep out of the money. All right. Now, for add the money, we have a delta of 1. For, uh, you know, uh, in the money, we have a delta of around 0.521. And for deep in the money, we have the delta of around 1. All right. And for out of the money, it works the other way around. We, are, we have a delta of 0 to 0 0.5. All right, for something that is out of the money, not very deep, but out of the money. And for something that is very deep out of the money, in that case, you know, the delta is near to zero. All right, it is not exactly zero, not exactly one, but it is tending towards zero, tending towards one. That is how you need to understand this. So my point here is, you know, what delta tells you is the moment of the uh, call option value vis-a-vis -vis the stock price. Now, say, for example, we are standing at a strike price of 17,500 with the nifty value at 19,000. Now, in this case, if Nifty moves to 19,200, all right, in this case, if Nifty moves by 200 points. So in that case, what will happen really, uh, what will happen here is that the call option value would move to 1900. So what you can see the similarity, you know, there's a moment of 200 points in the Nifty index. And at the very same time, the call option has also moved by 200 points. So the delta is close to one. The moment in the call option value is 200. If you divide it by the uh, moment in the stock price or the underlying that is nifty uh, that is also 200 so that the delta is near to one it is not exactly one but that that this definitely helps you to understand now say for example we have a delta of 0.75 all right uh, where we are you know simply in the money in that case say for example uh, the nifty moves uh, to 19,200 so there's a moment of 200 basis point so here the moment in the price would be 0 0.75 multiplied by uh, 200 that would be 150. So the option would move by 150 uh, points in terms of value. And likewise, you can figure out when we have add the money delta of 0 0.5, you know, there's a moment, there'll be a moment of 0 0.5 in the option value vis-a-vis -vis whatever happens in the uh, stock price value and likewise and so forth. And for out of the money, the value in the moment uh, and for out of the money, the change in the option value is lesser vis-a-vis, -vis, you know, the uh, stock price. And it's more so towards, you know, tending towards zero as in, as in when it moves more out of the money. So say, for example, we have a uh, delta of 0.25. So in case if Nifty moves by 100 points, the moment here would be only by 25 points. All right. All these moments, I'm saying it in the positive direction, in the upper direction. So that is how the moment I'm uh, showing you the relation with because call option has a uh, positive relationship with a uh, with the stock price so that is how it works around i'm hoping that you have understood this and this is how delta and theta works around the most important greeks are these two but you also need to understand vega rho and all those other option greeks which we'll be discussing in the future videos but for this i'm pretty sure that you you know you might be able to relate this to the option chain that you generally see while trading options and you'll be able to see how the moment is exactly happening in the option price given that you are looking at the moment in theta and as well as the delta make sure you do like and subscribe to our channels uh, for more such videos where we'll be discussing options where we'll be discussing a lot of things around finance so make sure you remain subscribed